Welcome, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Cameron Delano, Strategic Architect with F5, and this is the first in a series of videos that explore the various hybrid architectures that can be deployed using the F5 product portfolio. We'll be showing how to use the accompanying GitHub repo and CI-CD platform as stepping stones to deploying these solutions in your own environment. Here in part one, we'll be showcasing the F5 Distributed Cloud Web App and API Protection Service as well as the Big IP Advanced Web Application Firewall. So what do I mean by a hybrid architecture? Well, these are deployments that utilize multiple F5 products in a complementary pattern to provide a layered defense in depth security strategy. In this example, we'll be deploying an edge WAF using F5's distributed cloud services and an additional WAF closer to the application with Big IP Advanced WAF. Now, what does this give us? While well, all applications require protections for things like the app and API OWASP top 10, layer three and seven denial of service, malicious user detection, fraud and bot defense, we can provide that with the distributed cloud web app and API protection at the edge. Additionally, each app has specific requirements related to its use case, the infrastructure it's deployed on, and a language it's written in. We can provide this tailored protection closer to the application using the Big IP Advanced WAF. We go into this in greater detail in the Hybrid Security Architectures article series linked in the video description. Here we discuss the concepts and benefits of the approach, as well as how the F5 WAF engine is uniquely positioned to provide these solutions. This is also a great jumping off point for each of the use cases covered in the series. In each of the subsequent articles, we dive into the use case and include step-by-step -step instructions for deploying your own services using the code and CI-CD pipeline provided in the associated GitHub repo. Here you can see we're deploying the OWASP Jupe Shop application protected by a Big IP Advanced WAF Virtual Edition, and we're supplementing this with distributed cloud services to provide complementary protection at the edge. Now let's take a quick look at the prerequisites we need for the deployment. You're going to need a distributed cloud account and an API certificate, an AWS account that's subscribed to the Big IP machine image in the AWS marketplace, as well as a Terraform cloud and a GitHub account. Now let's go ahead and get into our demo. To begin, we need to set up our environment. As I mentioned, we're using Terraform Cloud. This is so that we can share state between our Terraform runs. So let's go ahead and begin there. I've pre-created most of our workspaces. We need one for each asset being deployed. We're missing the XE workspace, so I'll create that now. Here, we need to make sure that we choose CLI workflow since we'll be using GitHub runners to run our Terraform. Once we have it created, we need to go into the settings and ensure that we're sharing state with all the other workspaces. Now, we need to set up our variables. At the root of your organization, select Settings, then Variable Sets. As you can see, I've pre-created most of these as well. But we still need our API certificate environment variable. While this specific variable may not be sensitive, I'm going to still mark it as such out of habit and an abundance of caution. Also note that I've shared the variable set with all the other workspaces in the organization. Now all these variables and values are provided both in the article series and in the GitHub readme. I've just pre-created things to save time. Now let's go ahead and get started on our GitHub configuration. We link to the repo in the article and also include instructions for what's required. The first thing we need to do is create a fork in the repo. I've already got one ready with some pre-created secrets to save time. We need to have a secret for each Terraform Cloud workspace that we created. We're still missing our distributed cloud workspace, so I'll add that now. Now, just like with our Terraform Cloud variable set, everything needed to set this up is provided in the article series in GitHub README. Now that we've finished setting up our environment, we can go ahead and begin our deployment. To begin our deployment, the first thing we need to do is check out our deployment branch. 
This needs to be named deploy-xc-bigip. This can be changed in the GitHub Actions workflow config if required. Now that we're in our deploy branch, we need to copy over and set up our local TF bars. This needs to be done for infra, big IP, and XC. Next, we need to comment out the TF bars section of our gitignore so the files will be pushed to GitHub when we deploy. Now, in the infra TF bars, you'll add your deployment prefix and your resource owner. The deployment prefix will be used throughout all resources as a way to identify what's been created. You can also make any changes to what region and availability zones you want your assets in. Next, in the big IP TFRs, you can change the machine image if you require more features or greater throughput. And finally, in the XC TFRs, you will need to provide your XC tenant URL, the namespace for your deployment, any additional features you want to turn on, and the fully qualified domain name for your application. Once all the changes have been made, we add and commit the changes and push our deploy branch to GitHub to kick off the build. Back in GitHub, we can see our deployment under Actions. Now we'll monitor our pipeline and see things being created and watch for errors. Some of these resources take quite a while to stand up, so I'm going to use some video magic and speed this up a bit for the sake of timing. We can see that we're now on our infrastructure. This is all of our AWS resources being created, such as our VPC and our subnets. Next, it moves on to Juice Shop. This is deploying our application server, our web app, our IAM roles, and any additional network resources needed for our application to run. Next is our Big IP. This is going to deploy our instance, the IAM role, any additional network resources, as well as run declarative onboarding and AS3 from the automation toolchain to onboard our big IP and deploy our virtual servers, pools, and WAF policy. The outputs of this module will provide the information we need to connect to our big IP after it's deployed, our management IP address, and our auto-generated password. Last but not least, we move on to our distributed cloud resources. This is deploying our load balancer, pool, and WAF policy. And just like that, we're finished. We could head on back to the summary and view our completed workflow. Now let's look back at the big IP outputs and get the information we need to log into our instance. Go ahead and copy our auto-generated password and open up our management URL. And once we log in, we can check and see what's been created. If we change into our tenant, in this case tenant1, we can see the virtual server that was created. Now if we navigate to our security policies, we can see the WAF policy that was deployed. We can dig a bit deeper into this and view our policy under resources. Now let's check our pool. As you can see, here we have our Juice Shop app server as our pool member. Now let's check our XC config. Once we log in, we can navigate to the web app and API protection tile. Here we can see our load balancer that was created. I'll go ahead and save off our app FQDN so we can take a look at it next. Now let's take a look at our pool. Here you can see our virtual server on the big IP is our pool member. Now let's check our load balancer, config, and WAF policy. Here we can see our default WAF policy in blocking mode. We can modify this and provide extra protection based on feature flags that we will demo in further installments of the video series. Finally, let's check our web app. And here we can see the juice shop ready to take our order and leak our credentials. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demo. Workloads are increasingly deployed across multiple diverse environments and application architectures. Organizations need the ability to protect their essential applications regardless of deployment or architectural circumstances. 
Equally important is the need to deploy these protections with the same flexibility and speed as the apps they protect. With the F5 WAF portfolio, coupled with DevSecOps principles, organizations can deploy and maintain industry-leading security without sacrificing the time to value of their applications. Not only can edge and shift left principles exist together, but they can also work in harmony to provide a more effective security solution. Thank you, and have a nice day.